All right, it's Christmas time, and I thought I would show you a last-minute gift idea that we used this year, which is also sort of an upcycling idea where we're using some of our old bottles. And what we made were these wind chimes. And you have some feathers to catch the wind. And really, we made about a half a dozen of these. And all they cost us was the price of this pack of beads which is maybe, I don't know, six dollars or something. But, here's this one. Each one has a different sound. But, um, I'll show you how we made these. I don't know if you can uh, see the iridescent nature of some of these feathers. They're actually pretty decorative. And, uh, this one, my cut wasn't that great. Um, with the bottle cutter, and so I used a grinder, it only took a couple more minutes and sort of has a warbly edge. And then the feathers I put on in a few places. There. So you have a few different types of feathers from some roosters and a tur turkey that we butchered. But, uh, at any rate, um, you take some leather straps and I actually got these as a gift from somebody, so we didn't even pay for those. And you need one of the straps to be pretty long. And then you take a second strap, and you put those together, and then you're making kind of a big loop. And just tie a knot. So the idea there is that I have a really nice double loop hoop for this to hang from. If there's just one piece of leather, I imagine uh, the wind could eventually wear, wear through this that's hanging on a nail. You can also put some wax, some type of paraffin wax, in here, and that'll uh, make it last a lot longer. It works sort of like a, a lubricant on there, um, kind of an old nunchucker trick. But then um, the next thing that, that I used these little wooden, uh, kind of like a disc there, but I just cut this from a Chinese elm tree. And basically, the idea is to just sort of run these through here. And then this is what supports the, the bottle, this piece of wood. And then we use a second piece of wood at the bottom, and that's where it hits the bottle to make the sound. So, at any rate, the reason that it's done this way, kind of like the, uh, let me tuck this piece in. There it goes. All right. So, Kind of like we reinforce this hoop with another piece of leather. When, when we go through this piece of wood with all of our pieces of leather and then tie a knot, the weight of the bottle, which is the heaviest part of this wind chime, that's all going to be supported now by three pieces of leather instead of hanging just on this one piece of leather. So when you're making these wind chimes, it, it's a good idea to use two pieces of leather uh, like I'm showing you. So in case just this one piece wasn't enough, you're, you're hanging on three pieces and then have two pieces for the hoop. But at any rate, it's kind of a nice big bottle. It has more of a gong sound to it. Um, so anyways, that's what's holding your bottle right there. You then, get right on this edge. I think the bottle lasts longer if they hit just a little bit up. So now that we did that, I'm going to tie a knot. There you go. Also like a church bell. All right, then the last thing that you have to do is use some of the beads and uh, 
basically if you just uh, you can have as many feathers on here as you want but I'm just going to show you this real quick I just tie a knot then this bead's not coming off and then all you need to do is grab a few feathers for demonstration purposes. Um, when you pull this bead up a little bit, stick the feathers in the bead, like so, then, maybe just two for now, then when I scoot this bead down, I'll hold on to the leather and the feathers, and scoot the bead over top of the feathers until I can grab them. There they are. And when that bead sits all the way down on that knot, it kind of locks in these feathers. So there you go, the feathers are locked in there. And uh, I might, I'll might, i probably take this apart and put in some more, but I'm just trying to hurry this video along for you guys. But then, there you go. So you've got your two pieces of leather for the hoop and put some wax in there so that it lasts longer. And then uh, three pieces of leather holding up this bottle, since that's our heaviest part. And you can, uh, you can add more beads and feathers. We did that uh, with this one. You kind of see there's, there's more beads and feathers inside the bottle, especially if it's clear and you can see them. But uh, then the wind catches this and... Uh, So here's the rest of our finished wind chimes. You'll notice the uh, feathers all turned out different. Lots of different combinations of feathers. And they're all sort of uh, unique. They each sound unique as well. We've given a few of these away already to some friends and family members. Kind of like a church gong there. The uh, place you can get some bottles, if you don't empty a lot of bottles yourself, you can uh, get them from the glass recycling place. When we drop off our glass recycling, we also exchange for some, some other bottles. The... Uh, Glass Recycling Place has also been a place where we found old canning jars and some other pretty interesting bottles for, you know, if you're into cutting up bottles and we've made a lot of neat candles and cups and things out of those bottles. Don't forget to sand down the bottom of your bottle so there's no sharp edges. Here's a little tip, you might want to make sort of a metal hook to hook your leather through. And here's that one that I made kind of interesting on the bottom. It's a nice uh, last minute gift for Christmas and uh, a way to continue with our ideals of no waste. So there you go. Bottle wind chime. Merry Christmas. All right, here's a cool gift idea, making planners. And pretty much you just cut your bottle like this, a little divot so you can add water to it. And you probably should put some sort of a cotton cord as a wick in here. Um, otherwise, they haven't seemed to work too well with just like the, just the hydrocroton. You might be able to see those little clay, they're like little circles. 
Um, but we put those in dirt, and it, it works okay. But this was from a big bottle for this orchid. And so you can make some planters like that. Um, also just glasses. Here's a, a big glass, or here's a little 12-ounce one. I like the, the blue that we found. But uh, glasses and planters, there's that idea. Let's go uh, look at some candles we're making. All right, we're using some of these bottles that we cut down and we sanded the edges to make some candles. And um, there's a few here that are almost done. And I like to have candles that are in some sort of a glass container just so it doesn't make a mess and for safety. But uh, we're going to do a few different kinds. We melt down candles that uh, if it's a color we don't like, we'll put it in a darker glass. Our favorite candles are these pure beeswax candles from Pollen Arts. Pure beeswax candles, they're antique bottles, and they're real cool. Um, when we burn them down, there's a little bit of beeswax left over. We always do something with it, like melt it into a, something like this. So you can uh, use up the, the last bit of your candles. If you have, like in this box here, we've got a bunch of... Uh, kind of big, chunky, ugly candles that we're going to melt down into to different things. Um, we're using some different fragrances and coloring. Uh, it's best, like, like I was saying, to use the pure beeswax candles with no fragrance or coloring, but um, at least making your own, you can control the level of that stuff if you want it. We like to use uh, essential oils. So this is a tin of all different essential oils. And you can also use molds and that's really easy to do. There's uh, some mold sealer you put in the corner so, so your molds don't leak. Here's a round one. But you can also use, uh, you know, real small ones and whatnot. <coughs> There's, uh, you know, some candle making you need to be at a certain temperature, like if you want to make those chunk candles. And so there's a specific thermometer you can get. But there's some of our candle making supplies. Uh, we'll zip ahead in this video and just show you the finished candles and then uh, that'll be all. Hi, here's the candles that we finished today. And what's nice about the candle idea for cut glass, like this is the bottom of a Gordon's gin bottle that I got from a neighbor. And you saw the top of it was a wind chime. So it doesn't really matter how you, if your cut doesn't go well on your, on your bottle. If, uh, if you break the top, you can make a candle. And if you break the bottom, you can make a wind chime out of the top. Um, and then if they both match, you can make the uh, planners like I showed you. Um, the glasses, here's the glass I made. I glued some of these things on there. I um, may want to sand the glass and sand these baubles if you're going to do that. So glasses, those planters, the wind chimes, and the candles. Those are all some pretty good ideas for working with cut glass. Uh, this one turned out pretty neat. This was an old wine bottle. We put aquarium gravel in the bottom with blue going into green. Kind of a ocean looking one. Here's a baby, baby food jar. And this was just a refill. Uh, this one, this one, and this one were uh, candles that had burnt all the way down, so uh, you know you couldn't light them anymore. But there's quite a bit of wax. This was a vanilla candle, and that's what's in here. So we were able to, um, you know, have zero waste of our of our wax in this candle. Um, this one turned out kind of neat. Couple couple colors in there. And this is an old wine bottle. When you're cutting glass. You don't want to get really thick, like that thick green wine bottle glass. You want glass more like this, um, somewhat light colored, thin, about this size. Works really well for cutting and breaking. Um, and this is a bunch of our leftover beeswax, pure beeswax, from some of the candles we got from Pollen Arts. Um, this is the bottom of a big vodka bottle, about like a gallon, I guess, uh, also from my neighbor there. But uh, yeah, I guess it pays to have some neighbors that drink if you don't. And then uh, a couple layers of color on this one. 
turned out pretty neat. But this is um, a good thing to do for a day. It's really cold outside. And um, not only that, you're upcycling and you can get the family involved. And then it's uh, some gift ideas. So there you go. Have fun cutting your bottles.